Greetings, my name is Elder Lenise Beecher and I'm a member of Gideon Christian Fellowship International. Greetings to you today. I'm under the leadership of Apostle Willie F. Wooten. So I bring you greetings on this Sunday, May 10th, 2020. I wanna say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. You're appreciated, you're loved. And so thank God for you and for those who may not have mothers on the earth, I pray that God will give you peace and joy and strength. So happy Mother's Day to you. But today I have a word from the Lord and I wanna bring that to you for just a few minutes, but I wanna start off with prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for your great grace and mercy. We thank you for being with us. We thank you, Father, that you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you have made, that we can rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, we rejoice in you, Lord God, no matter what the situation in life. Father, you said to give you praise and worship and honor and adore you. So we do that this morning, Lord God. And, Father, we ask that you would come into our midst. We ask, Father, that there would be nothing, Lord God, to distract your people, but, Father, that we would be attentive to hear what the spirit of the living God is saying this morning and we bless you for it and we honor you in Jesus name I pray amen and the title of this message this morning is in times like these and I know it may sound simple and I know some of you may go to the song if you're old enough in times like these but in times like these, we have different seasons upon the earth. There are times that we've had seasons of laughter. We've had seasons of joy. We've had seasons of sorrow. We've had various times. And if you live long enough, just keep living like one of my friend's parents used to say, you're going to experience various times in life. You're going to experience times of sickness and suffering. You're going to experience times that are not so pleasant upon the earth. And so in 2 Timothy, 3 1 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 Paul prophesied this he said this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come the word no in this prophetic statement that Paul was making he said it means to have knowledge the Greek word is gnosko it means to have knowledge. It means to have understanding. So in these last days, these perilous times that are upon the earth, we need to have knowledge. We need to have understanding as to what's going on. The last days is a time of urgency. We need to have a sobriety. We need to know what is happening. We need to know that we have an enemy that's warring against us. But we know if we have knowledge that God will give us all that we have need of in the, these last days. In this time of urgency we have to know Satan's devices we have to know how he operates how he functions so many were not prepared even for this current time that is upon us it took us by surprise but Paul, Paul forewarned us of these times if we read in 2nd Timothy he told us that these events were going to take place and we can go in other parts of the Bible and it will prophesy to us and tell us of the end time events the word perilous uh, means that it is used to describe a dangerous time, a harmful time, a time that something will happen that we have to take risks. And so we're living in a time, it also means hard to bear. Uh, this pandemic that we've been in, it's been hard to bear. People have lost jobs, they've lost finances, they've lost homes, they've even lost loved ones. So it's been a time that's been hard to bear, but it's a perilous time. So what happens in times like these? What is it that we need in times like these? Well, the first thing that we need is Jesus. We need a savior in times like these we need to know that there is someone who is on our side we need to know that we have someone who is bigger than the problems and circumstances that we're going through in this life so we need Christ we need to accept him as our Lord and Savior Yeshua is the Hebrew word that means the one that rescues that's Jesus the one that helps us that's Jesus the one who preserves us the one who can save us the one who brings us to safety Yeshua Hamashiach that's that's the one that we serve. That's the one that we want to know. In John 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to make it in this world if we don't have Jesus. We know that. We've been taught that at Gideon Christian Fellowship International. And for anyone that's watching, you know that you need to know Jesus. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 says, Remember now the Creator in the days 
of your youth before the evil days draw nigh. We're in evil days. And just because you're young, that does not mean that you don't need Christ in your life. You need him even more. And there are older people who never want to get older. They want to remain youthful. But I tell you, if you live, you're going to get some gray hair. You're going to change your shape. You're going to go through experiences in life that are evil. And those evil days are now where sickness is upon us and all kinds of despair and famine is in the land as never before. There are doctors that are saying and scientists that they have been in their practices and disciplines for 50 years and better and they've never experienced any time like this. Why? Because these are perilous times. And so we need to remember that we have a creator that loves us. Remember him in the days of your youth before the evil days draw nigh, young people. But even if you're older, we need him even more because these are our last days. These are days of urgency that are upon the earth. So we need to know that we have a savior. Proverbs 18.10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. He's the one that's our defender in these times of trouble. He's the one that can rescue us. He's the one that can save us. The second thing that we need to know in times like these is that we need to be full of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has been left here upon the earth when Jesus ascended to be back at the right hand of the Father. He said, I won't leave you comforters. I'll leave you Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a paraclete. That means the one that walks right alongside of you. He directs us. He engages in our lives. He tells us what to do. He can hear all of the groanings that we have on the inside of us. Why? Because he lives inside of us. And so we want to know that he is the one that is interceding for us in times like these. Romans 8 26 says, likewise, the spirit also helps our weaknesses or our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for. And there are many times that we don't know in these times that we're living in. We hear things from one day to the next. Sometimes we don't know what to pray. Sometimes we're just saying, Lord, help. Lord, deliver us. Lord, keep us. Lord, protect us. Lord, save us. And so Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. And we need to let him rise up even in these times like this and know that he is on our side. Acts 1, chapter 1, verse 8 says, but you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The church needs power and we're the church and we're lacking in some of the things that God wants us to have. Why? Because sometimes we've been complacent, but nevertheless, God has been faithful to us. And so we need to know that we are full of power, that dunamis power that God wants us to have in these last days, in these times of uncertainty. We need to know in these dangerous times that we have one walking right alongside of us that lives on the inside of us that rises up in us to tell us that we have authority, that we don't have to fear, that we can have peace because Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. E Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 18 says, see that you walk circumspectly. That means see that you walk carefully in these times, not as fools. You can be educated and still be foolish about some things in your life. But he said, be wise, redeeming the time. That means occupying all available time, not wasting time, but being sober in this hour. He said, because the days again are evil. We're living in an evil time. All manner of things have been unleashed up on the earth. But wherefore it says, be not unwise, but but understanding what the will of God is and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be full of the spirit. There are some people today, they're leaning to drugs, they're leaning to alcohol, they're leaning to all manner of things because they don't want to face reality. But when you have Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you can face reality. You can live to face tomorrow because you know you have Holy Spirit on the inside of you. So we don't want to be drunk with the things of this world. We want to be drunk with the spirit of God and with power and with authority that we can take a land, that we can take nations, that we can save our city that we can save our loved ones, that we can speak a thing and we know that it's going to happen because we're full of Deuteronomy's power, that Holy Spirit power. And so the third thing that we need in times like this, we need to fast and pray. Most Christians don't have a problem with praying and the Bible says pray without ceasing. But when it comes to fasting, sometimes we have difficulty there. But in the times like these that we live in, these perilous times, we need to fast and pray. We need to seek the Lord. We need to push aside 
aside the food uh, from time to time. And as we're staying at home, families are just hoarding food. They're going to the store because there's nowhere else to go. So they change their vices instead of going here and there. They're going to the shopping centers or not the shopping centers, but rather the stores, the grocery stores, and they're just buying food, hoarding it up. But I say unto you today to lay aside the food for a period of time because we have a real demonic force that has been unleashed upon the earth. And the Bible says some things come but by fasting and prayer. When Jesus was teaching the disciples and there was a demoniac boy and they came to him and said, why couldn't we cast out this demon? And he said, some things, these kind is what he said, come out by fasting and prayer. So this kind that is upon us, this pandemic that has never been in our generation of time, we need to fast and pray. We need to hear from the Lord as to what he's saying. Joel 2.12 says this. It says, therefore also know now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all of your heart and even with fasting, weeping before the Lord, mourning before the Lord. We need to weep before the Lord. We need to weep between the porch and the altar. We need to weep before the Lord and ask him for what's going on in this nation. And is there anything that we have done as the body of Christ to ask him for forgiveness? And he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from any way that would keep us from going forth in him as the enemy has tried to disrupt our future. But I say there is a future and a hope. And so so in times like these, let us fast and pray. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6 says this, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke? We need yokes broken. We need chains broken. We need to come out of bondage. Because the enemy has so many oppressed now, so many that are in despair. So we need to pray and fast so that these bondages that we're in can be loose. All this wickedness upon the earth. The Bible says in the last time that they would find creative ways to sin. And so there's so much that's happening. All kinds of diabolical things. All kinds of abominations. But when we fast and when we pray, it's to build up our holy faith. It's not to manipulate God, but it allows us to be assured that we have one that will hear our cry and attend unto our prayer and make haste to deliver us from all the things that the enemy can bring. The fourth thing that we need to know in times like these, we need spiritual wisdom and discernment. We're looking at the news 24 seven. Some of us, there are days that I don't even look at the news because I want my ear gates to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying more than I want to hear what the media is saying. So if you're going to listen to the news and all of the channels, and you're going to listen to what the doctors are saying, and you're going to listen to what the government leaders are saying you need discernment you need wisdom to know how to separate what is good and what is bad what is true and what is false and so we need as the believer to ask God for wisdom he said ask him he'll give it unto you he won't chide you for asking for wisdom we need discernment we need to know what is right and what is wrong first John chapter 4 verse 1 says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirit by the spirit if you're a believer you're all to be able to discern what they're saying because we run with the information as soon as we hear it we're on the phone and we're saying they say they say if they could be rich I'm telling you we have, we would have made them they and so they're saying this and they're saying that but what is Holy Spirit saying what is God saying what is true and what is not all that we're doing is causing anxiety to come upon ourselves and it's not a time for anxiety. It's a time where we would be at peace. First Kings 3 9 says this Solomon said, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. That's what we need. We need what Solomon said. We need an understanding heart. We need discernment so we can judge what's good and what's not in the times that we're living in. On Sunday, January 24, 2016, the Lord gave a prophetic word to the church, and it said this. It said, well, I say unto this nation that this nation shall come to a complete standstill. For I say many are indecisive now. Many are anxious now. Many are worried now. Many 
have cares upon them. And he said, this Holy Spirit said, and what's happening in this nation and what is happening in the church is the same and it should not be so. The nation is anxious. The church is anxious. The nation has opinions. The church has opinions. The nation is worried. The church is worried. The nation is shattered and we're being shattered in our spirit. So we should not be the same. We should have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So when you have discernment and when you have wisdom, you will know what is true and what is not. And so in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13, it says, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets great understanding. You'll be blessed to have the wisdom of God in these end times, in times like these, in perilous times, in dangerous times, in harmful times that we're living in. Finally, in times like these, we need the word of God. We can't make it as Christians without the word of God. The word has he hidden on the inside of us that we would not sin against him. So when we know what the word of God says, we won't be anxious like the prophecy said. We'll be at peace. We won't be worried like the nation is worried. We won't have all of these opinions. The only opinion that will matter is what God said, what thus said the Lord. So we need the word of God. Psalms chapter 119 verse 105 says the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God says in the midst of darkness all around us it would be like we have a headlight on our foreheads that we will never walk in darkness. We will shine as bright lights because we have the word of God that has been given to us. John chapter 15 verse 7 says this if you abide in me and my words abide in you then you can ask what you will and it shall be given. We need to ask for he and we need to ask for deliverance. We need to ask for a revival. We need to ask for repentance. Whatever it is, it can be found in the word of God. So we don't need to be in despair. Hallelujah. We have the word of God. And so let it be enriched on the inside of you. Psalms 91 4 says, his truth shall be our shield and our buckler. His truth is the word of God. And we can walk with it because it's been tried. It's been tested. It's been true. Jesus is the living word. And so we have that, that we can look in his word every day and read the scripture and encourage ourselves in the word of God in these times that we live in. Psalms chapter 9 verse 9 says this, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed and a strong tower in the times of trouble. But if we don't know the word of God, we won't know that that's in there. And he says in Psalms 91, as so many have been quoting that he will hide us under the shadow of his wings. Psalms 37 says, for us to fret not thyself of evildoers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity, but they shall soon be cut down. This this pandemic shall be cut down because there is a future and a hope that has been promised to us. So encourage yourselves to, uh, in the word of God, believer, and let, let uh, yourself arise in the spirit of God today. And so if you're watching and you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can do that. You can lift up your hands before the Lord. You can repent of your sins and know that he's faithful. As I said before, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Though your sin be as scarlet, he will wash them as white as snow. And so let Jesus come into your life. And so remember, we need Jesus in time like these. We need to be full of Holy Spirit in times like these. We need fasting and prayer in times like these. We need discernment and wisdom in times like these, and we need the word of God. And I know that God will not forsake us because he promised that he would always be with us. When I was fasting and meditating on the things of God, he showed me a picture of the nation and he showed me that there were needles. And I know you can't see it very well, but he showed me that there were needles that were going to be injected in every state. And his hand of fire was over this nation and the state of Louisiana, it was a different kind of needle. It was a red needle that he injected. He said, that's my blood. He said, because New Orleans has been pronounced as a hot spot. He said, yes, it is a hot spot. It's a hot spot for revival. It's a hot spot for the outpouring. It's a hot spot for the word of God to go forth. It's a hot spot for the gifts to be stirred up on the inside of you. And he says, I have a future and a hope. I have a plan for the city of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana. I have a plan for this nation and it shall not go under, says the Lord, because I'm in the midst of you. And he said, 
said you can arise and shine and he said that you can spread the gospel he said even in the places where you are because revival will take place there will be a great awakening in our city and in our state there will be an outpouring of holy spirit so i say to you today beloved be encouraged and know that even in perilous times like this that we have a savior we have a redeemer so happy mother's day once again to the mothers god bless you thank you for taking the time to watch Wherever you are this morning, you may be in your living room, wherever you're watching, let's just lift up our hands before the Lord. Father, we just bless you this morning for the word that has gone forth. We give you glory and honor and praise. We magnify your precious name. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. Father, I lift up all of your people this morning, Lord God. I pray your blessings upon the body of Christ. I pray your blessings upon the elderly, Lord God, upon the children. I pray your blessings, Lord God, upon the first responders, upon those, Lord God, who are attending unto your people. I pray the blessings of the living God to be upon those that have grieved in their spirit, Lord God, because of loss of loved ones. I pray your joy to overtake them this morning and that they would be full of glory. Lord God, let it rest upon them. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, that even if we're in perilous times, we know that we have a Savior, Lord God. We know that we have Holy Spirit. We know that we can depend on you, Lord God. Father, you're the first and the last. You're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord. So, Father, we submit our way unto you. We surrender all unto you this morning. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our land, over our hearts, oh God, over this city, over this state. And we're asking, Lord God, that the blood of the Lamb would come in, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the precious blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. But all men sin, Lord. Lord God, Father, that we would be free of anything that the enemy would want to come, Lord God, and beset us with. So, Father, I pray this morning, Lord God, Father, that you would break the chains, that you would break in on this situation, Lord God, Father, that is upon this land, Lord God, Father, that you would bring forth health and a cure, Lord God, Father, that you would bless us, Lord God, to be strong in you and in the power of your might, Lord God, and Father, that we would yield to Holy Spirit, Lord God, Father, that we would have new anointings, Lord God, falling fresh upon us, Lord God, Father, that you would stir up the gifts on the inside of us. There are those that are oppressed this morning. There are those that are weary. Well, I denounce that spirit this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, that you would enrich your people with the joy of the Lord to be their strength. And Father, that they would be full of Holy Spirit this morning. So, Father, we thank you that you are our protector. You're our defender. You're our guide. You're our shield. You're our buckler. You are very present help in the time of trouble. You said no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. That every tongue that rise up against your people that you will condemn. But this is our heritage in you. And we believe you, Lord God, with our whole hearts. And so, Father, help us to have understanding. Help us to have wisdom. Help us to have discernment. And Father, we arise as the church, Lord God, and we're ready to advance. We're ready to go forth. And so, Father, let it be unto us, Lord God, that we would submit our way unto you this morning, Lord God. Let your grace abound. Let your mercies that are new and fresh cover your people this day, Lord God. Cover the little babes, Lord God. Those that cannot help themselves, Lord God. And Father, I pray for the parents, Lord, that they would not be weary in their well-doing as they're staying home with their children in this hour, Lord God. But they would raise their children in the atmosphere of the Lord. Father, that their children would be full of knowledge and wisdom at an early age. And so, Father, everything that you have promised unto us, we thank you that is yes and amen this morning, that you have not taken anything back, Lord. You said no good thing that you would withhold from those that walk up right before you. So we walk up right this morning. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. Open our mouth to proclaim the gospel unto men. And so, Father, we bless you this morning for all that you've given unto us, Lord God. We say heal the land, Lord God. You said if your people who are called by your name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from every way of wickedness that you would hear from heaven, that you would forgive our sins and heal our land. So Father, we pronounce today that our land is healed, that you would cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Cover our hearts, oh God. Cover our doorposts. Cover our families. Cover our homes. Cover all of what you have given unto us. And we bless you for it this morning. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' matchless name I pray. Amen.